259-game veteran of the Dockers, the former captain, comes in. The kick is on its way. He's yeah. kicked the goal and three men are winning after the siren. It was a closing act in one of the most exciting games I've ever seen. The coach of the Fremantle Dockers, who didn't actually see that moment, uh, joins us <laughs> on the couch. We thought we'd play it for you, Ross, just to uh, refresh oh, yeah. your memory. Welcome to you. Thanks, Joe. It's great to be here. You, watch... you saw it on TV in the lift, in the, in the lift well, didn't you? As you get out at uh, yeah. the level where <laughs> you need to walk to the rooms, I heard a roar. And then I looked up, there was a TV as you get out of the lift, and I saw Monday with the ball, but I couldn't tell... I thought, this is interesting, how, <laughs> how far out he was, because it was a narrow pan, then they pan wide. I thought, oh, he's about 30 metres, 45 <laughs> degrees. I thought we are a chance here. So, so what I was your immediate much... reaction when he kicked the goal? Was it just a smile? Was it a pump of the fist? What did you do? No, I just turned and walked. I was quite um, frustrated that we got oh, to no. that position. So <laughs> yeah. the security guard said... That's a good win. <laughs> is he, is he pretty, uh, Sheepishly. Yeah. He seems like a pretty calm character, Rossi. He doesn't seem fussed at all. David Money handled that situation beautifully. Yeah, very level. Very level. Yeah. He's uh, very reasoned, very logical. Um, a bit different to myself. So, um, <laughs> he, But he's done that before. He, he against nailed Richmond. the Tigers in yeah, the yeah. MCG. A couple of years ago. And he had a shot against the Cats about 55 out. So... It was good hand. It was really good. Mark Grimes is a really strong defender, so things just went our way a bit, really. Well, they went your way for most of the day, and yet uh, you crumbled really in the last quarter, and to the mm. point where your stoppages have been one of your great strengths. And there was a stoppage which opened up the door for Alice to kick the great goal, and then all of a sudden, you've obviously assumed that you were going to lose the game. You've uh, walked out of the box, and uh, we've all seen it. We'll see mm. it again. Um, in disgust? I never disgust. Just. Can I ask you here, did you say to David Hale, well, mate, you've got 20 se 21 seconds to prove your worth? <laughs> yeah, he, he looks a little bit stressed, doesn't he? <laughs> well, there's not much you can do. No. You've done all your two-minute drills. Um, and that was interesting because we went from save the game to win the game. So yeah. one minute, Monday's back. Mm. And then they, uh, we said getting forward, they missed the shot, so we're still in front, save the game, they kick a goal, then you're back in to win the game. So get your numbers back in front of the ball, they'll roll them back, man them up. Um, and, I, and I suppose it's what you choose to focus on. Like for three quarters, I thought we played how we wanted to play. Yeah. And then, you know, do you focus on the last quarter? Or, mm. And then, or is it Damien? I think both of us aren't sure what to make of it. He had three quarters where he's frustrated. And then they couldn't have done much more than mm. they did, bar maybe close an open line and then they have a famous victory. So... As a coach, it can be bittersweet. What's your philosophy in those circumstances? And we'll play the behind the goal vision because mm. there's a lot going on. Some coaches tend to roll numbers back and go man on man, as you did there, not give them an out number. So you had eight forwards in, in effect. They had nine defenders. You yeah. had still had a couple coming off the back of the square. So you're sort of half giving up the wings there. Is that your thoughts? Yeah, there's a bit about yeah launch off the back because the ball can spill. So you've got some launches off the back. Try and get equal numbers in front of the ball as best you can, but... Um, and Lockie Neal took ground. He took ground really well. He didn't panic. He but he was only able to do that because your forwards were disciplined and left that space open and pushed back towards yeah. goal. I think there wouldn't be an AFL coach in the league that doesn't say if you can create an open line, however you get it done, so they can come out the front, do that. Yeah. And look, you see Riala, he's a, I think he's a first year player, isn't he? Or second year. Second year. So look, they've got a lot of youth in their team. And when you, it's a bit like us, when you're trying to build your fundamentals, it's hard to get to the two minute yeah. drill stuff often enough. And, so they almost need to practice it mentally more than even physically. Play your role in win the game, save the game mentally. So if the roles were reversed, what would you expect your players to have done in the same situation? Look, I don't think they've done too much wrong, except they would like to close that open line. You wouldn't want an open line. You'd like some frontal pressure coming out of them through the front of the square. So how many of your forwards do you drag back? You have a couple of presents at you, the you back You need something square. in front of the ball. I remember yep. I was at Carlton versus Geelong at uh, Eddie had them. Wayne Brinton was coaching, we had 18 back and somehow <laughs> they cleared the ball. I think Carlton cleared it, they picked it up, their mm. winger ran and hit Riccardi just inside 50. Yeah. So you've got to have some structure in front of the ball. How, how often, Rossi, do you get a chance out of practice? I know you said not a lot. Mm. Is, is it a pre-season thing where it gets practiced a lot or is it an in-season thing, these scenarios? Yeah, again, everyone has their own methods. We, we got to it late in the pre-season and then we did some walkthroughs and then... Fortunately, almost the week we did some walkthroughs, we were in a tight game, and then um, you'll grab that last two minutes and get the players to analyse it. What did we do well? Why did we 
So we, we've been had three situations. So we've done a lot right on both sides of the fence. So Bef before we move on from the game, you mm. had both Sandlands and Nat Five off the ground uh, with about ten minutes of play remaining. You yeah. appeared to communicate to them. What was the message? Well, clearly stoppages were yeah. an issue, centre square bounces, and they changed their blend up in there. Um, Edwards had gone inside, Grigg in particular. Mm. So as Nathan as our captain, it was, mate, get to Grigg. He, he was having a big quarter. You just need to, we need to negate it. There was too much movement. Just they were getting out on us a bit more than we'd like. So, and Aaron, because he can get his hand to it, you know, you get to the mids, you'll be the one common person mm. there, so you let them know that we're not getting it right here. We need to change the balance and how we're going about it. The, ch the change in uh, Nathan, Nathan Five and Mundy, uh, full forward and midfield, has been one of the mm. great positional moves uh, I think we've seen in the last five or six weeks. It's had a big impact. Mundy's been important in a couple of your close losses. Five's game yesterday in the first three quarters was phenomenal, but he seems mm. to have lost that capacity one-on-one -on -one to take a mark. and hasn't really delivered for you inside the forward 50 as much as I think he can. Yeah, he hasn't been as forward as much as I reckon it would be 80-20, mm -hmm. um, Nathan's favour midfield. He, he did take one around the half forward, but look, Rance is a great defender, mm. and Rance really hit him hard off the ball, like legally, and checked him. And then that Grimes one, I, I was putting the bib on, really. <laughs> I thought, here we go. And sometimes, you know, you just misjudge it, but it shows you how good Grimes is, mm. that one-on-one -on -one just before three-quarter time, yeah. I think, yeah.